Which free agent starters are considered sneaky good ads? Do any of them make sense for the Cardinals, though? Plus, the latest on Tommy Edmond and his progress from wrist surgery and Adam Wainwright's broadcasting future, all on today's episode of Locked on Cardinals. You are Locked on Cardinals, your daily St. Louis Cardinals podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey there, Cardinals fans. I'm J.D. Haffern, and I'm a national radio sports anchor, born and raised in the Lou, and a lifetime Cardinals fan, and I'm your host for Locked On Cardinals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You can follow me on Twitter, X at J.D. Sports Radio. You can also follow the podcast at LO underscore Cardinals. I want to thank those of you who make Locked On Cardinals your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts. You can also find us on YouTube. Make sure you like, subscribe, and comment. If you are going to join us on YouTube, interact with us. Don't be shy. Hit that notification button. Remember to do that so you know when the new episodes are posted. This is a show serving Cardinal Nation and giving the best fans in baseball all of the info about the birds on the bat. Today's episode being brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get 150 bucks in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. Now, most of us agree that uh, if the Cardinals really want to take that next step and become a team that can contend for a World Series championship, that another top of the rotation arm is something that is sorely needed. And it's something that would put them into the discussion. Uh, I don't know even if you gave them Blake Snell or Jordan Montgomery, whether or not that puts them into one of the elite level teams. I, I don't know if that gets them there, but it wouldn't hurt. <laughs> it wouldn't hurt the whole offseason. We brought up names like uh, Dylan Cease of the White Sox, former Cardinal Jordan Montgomery, uh, NL Cy Young Award winner Blake Snell, the Guardian Shane Beamer, uh, Bieber, uh, Tyler Glass now before he got traded to the Dodgers. Uh, we've talked about a lot of these guys, and all of them seem to fit the criteria of a solid number two guy to go along with AL Cy Young runner-up Sonny Gray, who is your ace of the staff. Okay, that's what he's been brought on to do. Some people question whether or not Sonny Gray is actually a number one type of guy. And uh, you can argue either side, uh, but I'm going to go off what he did last year and what he's been doing recently and go ahead and say, yeah, he's one of the top pitchers in all of baseball. And I think he's going to be a fine ace, but it would be a lot cooler if you had guys, uh, another guy similar to his type of production to uh, go ahead and put that into the top of the rotation and the Cardinals for a multitude of reasons, whether, you know, it's payroll or, or trade costs to go get guys have just not taken that step yet. And it's, it's frustrating fans signs continue to point in the direction that as far as starting rotation arms go, they're likely done this off season after getting Sonny Gray and Kyle Gibson and Lance Lynn to go along with miles Michaelis and Steven Matz as your top five guys. And then you've got younger guys, former first-round draft picks like Matthew Libertor, uh, Zach Thompson, ready to take the ball if and when Stephen Matz or any of these guys go down with any sorts of injuries. The hope is that they won't have to do that. Now, Stephen Matz over the years has proven that he's kind of fragile and uh, will probably end up on the IL at some point or another, which is why it's nice to have a, a Libertor to Zach Thompson just ready to go. Uh, both of them left-handers, just like Matt. So I, I feel like that's the plan. Now, John Mozeliak has continued to say that there is still room for things to happen, okay? He continues to say that, that he's not saying they're done, that there is still some wiggle room in the payroll, and that they're not shutting the door on any other sort of moves. Um, so we will follow suit. We will follow suit. Uh, as Mo goes, we go here at Locked on Cardinals. And if he says they're not done, then we're going to have to believe him. I know it's tough sometimes because uh, we've heard him say some things that weren't necessarily true before, uh, but we're going to continue to discuss ways that they can improve the team, no matter how slim the chances are that they may or may not sign any of these guys anyway. But 
We're going to continue to talk about it because it's the off season and uh, this roster is not complete yet. So Brent McGuire at MLB.com put out a list of the five free agent starters who he describes as sneaky good ads for, for any team out there, not just the Cardinals, for anybody. But do any of them actually make sense for the Cardinals on this list? So let's go through a few of them and find out together, shall we? All right, we're going to start with a gentleman who uh, has been in the league for, for quite a, a while now. All right. Uh, he has had some good years, but has also dealt with some injuries. We're going to talk about he Yunjin Ryu. I think that's exactly how he pronounce it these days, but um, let's start there. Let's start with Ryu who um, has pitched for the Dodgers and the Blue Jays turns 37 in March. So immediately we see the age and that's, you know, right in the Cardinals wheelhouse, right? 37 uh, joking sort of, uh, but here's what McGuire had to say about him, uh, talking about him being sneaky ad. We'll throw up a picture of, of uh, Ryu here. All right, so McGuire says this. After Tommy John's surgery in June 2022, Ryu returned last August and produced 11 solid starts for the Blue Jays for the rest of the season. In 52 innings, he ran a 3.46 ERA, a 123 ERA plus. That was backed by a 385 expected ERA, which is based on the quality and quantity of contact against the pitcher. It's a far cry from his stretch of dominance from 2018 to 2020, where he had a 2.30 ERA in 56 starts, but he still has the tools of a good starting pitcher. The elephant in the room is Ryu's injury history. In addition to his surgery in 2022, we also missed the entire 15 season and most of 16 due to left shoulder surgery and elbow tendonitis. In 17, the left-hander has only exceeded 100 innings in three of seven seasons. He'll turn 37 before opening day and saw his four-seam fastball velocity drop to a career low 88.4 miles per hour, which placed him in the third percentile for fastball velocity. That's not good, by the way. Uh, still, Ryu has all of the tools to turn out a quality season in 2024, and the projections agree if he can just stay healthy. Now, my thoughts on Ryu as uh, somebody to add to the Cardinals roster I'm certainly not an anti-veteran pitcher type of guy by any means. I see no fault in signing guys who are in their 30s. I know people want that next big guy, age 25, the Yamamoto type of guys. You want the ace that's going to be around for a decade and stuff, but it's not easy to find those guys unless you develop them yourself. So um, veteran guys, I'm okay with, but I'm not sure if I could sign off on a late 30s starting pitcher. 37, Coming off a major surgery like Tommy John and has seen his velo drop into the, the upper 80s, which McGuire talked about there. Now, you're going to say, but J.D., you like the Andrew Kittredge deal. What's the difference? Well, Andrew Kittredge, I guess you can call me two-faced if you want to, but in my eyes, Kittredge, he is younger, by the way. He's also a reliever and still has pretty good velo going after he returned from Tommy John's surgery last year. So, those are my reasons why I still back up the Kittredge uh, deal instead of going after somebody like Ryu. Uh, the positives are that it would be a short-term deal, which is something the Cardinals are more inclined to do than a long-term deal. So that's a positive. Um, you're going to get him on a, a contract that's going to be a prove-it type of thing. I personally, though, I just it doesn't seem like something the Cardinals are are going to be interested in. You know, you've already got Lynn, you got Gibson, who are on the back nine of the uh, age of thirty. So, um, not thinking that another one for the rotation is something that they want to do. You've got Michaelis, who is also uh, in the in the backslide of the thirties. Uh, so, I, I don't think that's a great idea, at least for this year. Okay. Next on the list is a guy who. Was an all-star last year. He threw a no-hitter last year, yet he remains a free agent. We'll be talking about him next on Locked on Cardinals. After the holidays, we could all use a little extra cash. I'm, I'm sure you can agree with that. Who doesn't want more money, especially after all the gift giving? We still need to buy the everyday things that we need. So make sure you're getting cash back on all of your everyday purchases by using Ibotta. Ibotta is a free app that gives you the most cash back every time you shop on hundreds of items from groceries, beauty supplies, toys. Hey, how about for the kids, right? So you can make sure that you're beating inflation no matter what it is you're purchasing. Now, the average Ibotta user 
earns an extra $145 per year. Now that can cover a ton of different things. It can cover your shopping trips. How about a flight to uh, go visit somebody or get out of the freaking cold of St. Louis and head somewhere warm for about a week or so. Uh, you could use it towards that. Spend it on a, a fancy dinner if you want to do that. It's whatever you want to use the money on. It will be there for you. Now, other apps will give you points that don't amount to much, much but uh, with Ibotta, you can add your offers in the app, upload your receipt, and you get real cash that you can cash out to your bank account, PayPal, or on gift cards if you want to. Join over the 50 million savers and earn cash back every time you shop from over 2,700 brands and retailers, which includes Lowe's, Macy's, Sephora, Best Buy. I know you like electronics. How about a new TV? How about that? NFL playoffs? Why not? Uh, right now, Ibotta is offering our listeners five bucks just for trying Ibotta by using the code Locked On MLB when you register. So head over to the App Store or Google Play Store, whichever one you use, and download the free Ibotta app to start earning cash back and use the code Locked On MLB. That's L O C K E D O N M L B. And of course, Ibotta spelled I B O T T A in the Google Play or App Store. Use the code Locked On MLB. And uh, get you some extra money because everybody likes that. And I know we come to sports to escape from some of the crazy realities of real life, but let's talk just for a minute about preparing for tough situations. Again, weather has been a real issue, not only here in the Midwest, but all over the place. I mean, you saw what just happened in Buffalo, right? Kansas City. I mean, just crazy, crazy weather. And it ain't done with us yet. You know, winter is still here in full force. So brace yourself for things like a major weather event. And uh, when things might be a little short on supply, you are covered, my friend, thanks to our partners at Jace Medical. With life-saving antibiotics and a long list of daily medications that can be ordered in a one-year supply, even ED generics if you need it. Jace Medical has the Jace case, which is a pack of five different antibiotics to treat a long list of bacterial illnesses, which includes UTIs, respiratory infections, sinusitis, skin infections, among others. All of this stuff happens to human beings. It could happen to you. Be prepared for it. Visit jacemedical.com and complete your physician encounter. It'll be reviewed by a board-certified physician, and then your medications, boom, you're going to have them. going to be dispensed by a licensed pharmacy at a fraction of the regular cost. It's never been more important to be prepared than today. So go to jacemedical.com, use the offer code locked on to get 20 bucks off your order. That's jacemedical, J-A-S-E, medical.com. Use the offer code locked on to get $20 off your order. Once again, thank you for making Locked On the uh, first listen every day. You can leave comments on YouTube as well as on Twitter anytime you want. Your feedback, always welcome and encouraged. And while I got you here, did you know that we have launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube? Locked On Sports Today. It's here for you 24-7 covering the top sports stories of the day with local experts of Locked On. Whatever team you root for. I know you're here for the Cardinals. If there are other teams out there in any sport, college, pro, probably got a show for you. So go to Locked On Sports today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever National Sports 24-7 streaming channel. All right, next on the list here, former Red, Angel, Tiger, and Philly, Michael Lorenzen. Now, McGuire writes about Mr. Lorenzen. I'm going to throw a picture of uh, him up there on YouTube real quick. Uh, McGuire writes, if you were told that a 32-year-old starter who made his first All-Star team and tossed a no-hitter in the previous season was a free agent, You'd have probably guessed that he would be one of the hottest names on the market. Instead, Lorenzen has received little buzz and could be looking at signing a modest short-term deal for the third straight winter. The past few seasons have been a bit of a whirlwind for the veteran right-hander who transitioned back to the rotation with his hometown Angels in 2022, pitched in the All-Star game for Detroit in 23, and then finished the year in the Phillies' bullpen after pitching poorly following his memorable no-hitter in his first home start in Philadelphia. Despite Lorenzen's volatility as a starter, there's enough to like in his profile. The righty was essentially a league average pitcher with a 101 ERA plus across 250 two thirds innings this past two seasons, a performance largely supported by his underlying numbers. Lorenzen has shown above average control of a five pitch mix and has been able to prevent quality contact to make up for a subpar strikeout rate 
18.9K percentage since 2022. He may not be an exciting option, but he could prove valuable by eating innings at the back of a contender's rotation and possibly pivoting to the bullpen come October. Now, you see those words, or you hear those words, if you're just uh, listening on the podcast, and uh, you've got short-term deal. You've got eating innings. Uh, not an exciting option. God, he sounds like he sounds like a Cardinal type of guy already, doesn't he? Like, just like a perfect Cardinal type of dude in their current situation that, that, that they're going through as far as with payroll and what they want to accomplish. I've personally actually met Michael Lorenzen before when I worked in Cincinnati, and he is a great dude, a great dude. He's got a Tyler O'Neill type of physique to him. He's taller than Tyler O'Neill, 6'3", but dude is a tank. Very much dedicated to staying in shape and taking care of his body. He's got a wonderful family. Uh, personally, I think he'd be a great fit on this team and in the clubhouse as a person. I'm not sure he's much of an upgrade of what you've got already. You know, I don't know if he's really that much better than what you're going to get from Gibson or Lynn. If Lynn has a bounce back season. He was better than Lynn last year, but we think Lynn's going to be a better pitcher in 2024. At least that's the hope. Um, he doesn't have swing and miss stuff. Okay. There's been times that he's gotten the ball up to the plate in the triple digits before, uh, but that's not normal anymore. Uh, I believe he was at like 94.1 average uh, fastball velocity. Uh, he's got a good chase rate, but he just doesn't get the strikeouts. It's, it's not one of his things. And, uh, Another thing to think about, I don't know what he wants to be. I don't know if he wants to be a starter or a reliever. He's certainly the type of guy who is willing to do whatever the team wants him to do. When he was with Cincinnati, the dude would go into the outfield. The dude would hit because he could hit the ball over the wall. He, he came in and pinched hit a few times. Like He's willing to do whatever it takes, which is something that I know Cardinals fans and uh, the front office and teammates, they, they would love to have him. Um, but if he came to St. Louis, I think it's a bullpen role would be what uh, he would end up being. And um, I don't know if that's what he wants to do. I don't know if he'd rather be a starter or not, but I wouldn't hate it. I wouldn't hate it if uh, Michael Lorenzen came to town and came to St. Louis. All right, let's do one more from McGuire's list here. Uh, he gave five. So let's go with uh, left-hander James Paxton, formerly of the Mariners, the Yankees, and the Red Sox. Uh, here is what mcguire says about him let me get you a picture of him there there he is with the red Sox from last year all right mcguire says paxton might have the most extreme high risk high reward profile of any remaining free agent starter after making just six mlb starts from 2020 to 2022 paxton returned with 19 starts for the red Sox last season paxton's 4.50 era was largely based on his ugly 1.69 home run per nine rate but his 3.77 expected ERA signaled that he was much better than his raw numbers. Paxton combined an on an above average whiff rate with an ability to throw strikes in nearly 100 innings. Like Ryu, Paxton's health woes have been frequent and date back to the beginning of his career. The lefty pieced together four straight seasons with at least 120 innings from 2016 to 2019, but there have been a barrage of injuries in practically every other season. Even in his resurgent 23 season, Paxton started the season on the injured list with right hamstring discomfort and ended it there with right knee inflammation. Whenever Paxton has been on a mound, he's been wildly effective, a career 112 ERA plus and a 3.46 fifth. The biggest issue has been keeping the 35-year-old lefty on the field. So my thoughts on James Paxton. I mean, there was a time um, and he brings it up there in, in his writings there from like 2017 to 2019 where Paxton, that dude was outstanding. Uh, I remember watching him when he was pitching for the Mariners and the dude threw gas and he was just tough to pick up. And um, he was really, really good. I'm shocked if you go back through his career that Paxton never garnered an all-star selection in any of those years, which is uh, mind boggling to me because he was really, really good. But the injuries are real, and the Cardinals were clearly this offseason targeting guys who have been relatively injury-free for the most part when they went after Sonny Gray and Kyle Gibson and Lance Lynn, guys who will take the ball 30 times or more a year. That's what they wanted. They, they didn't want to chase innings again. They, they had enough of that last year. They didn't want to burn the bullpen out, which is what happened last year, that the bullpen was trashed 
by the time you got to like June because they were exhausted. They were chasing innings all year. And for me, Paxton is just too much of a risk at this point in his career, in my opinion. Uh, the remaining names on McGuire's list here, uh, Jacob Junis, who's been with the Royals and the Giants, was with San Francisco last year, and Carlos Carrasco, who's been with Cleveland and the Mets. I'm going to link the story in the description here uh, and in the show notes if you're catching this on the podcast version. So if you want to hit the link, go read up on the other guys. You can do that if you want. Out of the five that he lists there, I'm, I'm going to be partial to Lorenzen. I think he would be the the, the better fit. Uh, I would... I guess I'm going Ryu second, Paxton third, um, Carrasco and Junis. Eh, nothing really all that, that excites me about them. Here's the idea, though, is that these are all guys that if the Cardinals had signed Sonny Gray and then either Lynn or Gibson, they would be a guy that the Cardinals would be very much interested in. But they already got Gibson. They already got Lynn. So I don't really know what any of these guys would actually add as far as an upgrade to what the Cardinals have in the rotation already. And that's really what we're looking for, right? Like, we don't need more of these guys. We we want somebody who's the next level up, right? So, um, but if you if you had, if I had to choose one, I'm going to go Michael Lorenzen on that one. But would love to hear what you guys think about this list. And uh, if you had to choose one of the five, uh, who would you choose? Leave them in the, leave your, uh, your ideas in the comments below and uh, hit me up on Twitter X. We're going to wrap things up with the latest on Tommy Edmond and his recuperation from wrist surgery. Plus Adam Wainwright's future becomes a little more clear. We'll talk about it next on Locked on Cardinals. Score this NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 if your team wins. And this is a great time to join FanDuel. If you haven't done it yet, no better time to get in on the action. A very simple and easy to use app. Even I have figured it out. Uh, you've got so many ways that you can bet. We're talking spreads and player props, which is always a lot of fun, especially in games where you don't care who really wins, okay? You don't care one way or another. But you know there's going to be some offense or something's going to happen, and then you can use the player props, and that's the way you can make your money. Over-unders, obviously, that's something you can do. Uh, divisional games this weekend in the NFL. Saturday, you've got Houston and Baltimore as game one. Ravens are favored by 9.5 right now. My Packers at the 49ers in the late game. San Francisco also favored by 9.5. I actually had somebody who commented that they're not going to listen to our podcast anymore because I'm a Packers fan. What? What? What are you kidding me? Anyway, Sunday starts with the Bucks at the Lions, Detroit by six and a half, and then Chiefs at Buffalo. Bills currently favored by two and a half. I'm excited for all the games this weekend. Obviously, Packers nine or something more near and dear to my heart, but do what you think is, is going to happen. Like put your predictions down, put your money where your mind is. Visit fanduel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season with FanDuel the official partner of the NFL. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On. Plus, you've got our national shows, which cover every single league. So go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. So with news that Tommy Edmond had wrist surgery uh, this offseason broke, there were some people who were a little bit upset about it that uh, that we hadn't learned about it sooner. Not that Tommy had to go under the knife, but that we weren't made aware of this uh, right after the season was done. Now, remember, the Cardinals didn't do like an exit press conference or anything like that, so they kind of you know kept the Tommy Edmond injury thing kind of kind of quiet. Uh, others began to wonder if this was a reason why. Somebody like Tommy Edmond or Brendan Donovan or Dylan Carlson uh, weren't a part of any trades for pitching this offseason because all three of them coming off of injuries at the end of last year. So that could be a good reason why that other teams are like, well, maybe we aren't going to trade with you because we don't know how those guys are going to bounce back yet. And of course, we're all wondering whether or not he's going to be ready for spring training and opening day since the indications are that he's 
going to be the starting center fielder, which is still weird to me after all the years of his stellar defense uh, up the middle as a middle infielder. Gold glove winner at second base. I it, It's shocking, but he was really good in center field last year. Uh, he really, really was. So um, much better than anybody else they put in center last year. They like him out there. So that's where he's going to be. John Denton gave us an update saying that the surgery was to address cartilage and bone issues and the aching wrist that landed him on the IL for three weeks last July and bothered him throughout the 2023 season. He did give us a quote from Tommy Edmond when talking about his uh, – his injury, uh, I believe this quote was from the winter warm-up this past weekend. Uh, Tommy said, I'm very confident I'll be ready for the season. Uh, apparently, he shed the cast that he's been wearing to protect the wrist, so that's good news. You got progress there. Uh, Tommy continued saying, we'll see what spring looks like. I think hitting will be the big step because there are so many steps that go along with it. You've got to hit off the tee, then soft toss, and then batting practice, and then off the pitching machine and getting into games again. We'll take that day by day, figure out each step as by risk response to each thing. To me, it sounds like I'm, I'm, <laughs> I am optimistic that he will be back by opening day, but it sounds like to me, they don't really know when he's going to be a full go, which probably means more playing time for Dylan Carlson in spring training in center field, as well as Victor Scott, the second which is not a bad thing, especially with the Dylan Carlson thing. Um, I'm one of the guys who still has not given up on DC just yet. I'm hoping he can recapture the confidence and and the health that, that made him the top prospect he once was because he didn't really start dealing with injuries until he got to the major league level. And unfortunately, it's derailed what seemed to be a promising career when you know he was up for a Rookie of the Year uh, award in his rookie season. So uh, I'm still... Very much curious what the backup shortstop role is going to look like behind Mason Wynn. Um, I, they've got time. We've got a little time here for them to figure that out, but I'm sure they'll get to it in the spring. But pitchers and catchers are set to report on February 14th, so it's not a whole lot of time. I don't know whether it's going to be letting Brendan Donovan, who's coming off elbow surgery, whether he's somebody who's going to be able to play a little bit of shortstop. Is it going to be Thomas Sujaysi? who ends up coming up and making the team. I, I, I don't know yet. These are questions that are good ones that I'm receiving from a lot of people that we'll have to wait till spring training to figure out because we don't have an answer to that yet. Uh, one guy that we do have an answer about, we know he's not going to be at spring training, at least we don't think, um, that's not going to be with the team this year. That's Adam Wainwright, who retired following last year, went out in a blaze of glory. Winning his 200th career game in a beautiful game. Uh, and then singing the Cardinal Nation. Uh, even better, right? But we haven't seen the last of Wayno. Fox Sports announced that they have hired Uncle Charlie as a commentator to call about 15 MLB games this upcoming season on uh, getting the new gig. He said this, it's perfect for me. Get talking about the workload here. I want to stay in the game somehow and definitely knew that coaching is too many hours for my family and me to want to do that. I love broadcasting. I, I got my feet wet in the last few years, unfortunately, calling postseason games rather than playing. Being able to call those big games, those are postseason games to jump right in. I felt comfortable. I love watching the game. I love talking baseball, and I love teaching what I've learned. And hopefully, I could do some of that on the broadcast. Now, for anybody who uh, saw Adam Wainwright the last couple of years where he was filling in in those postseasons or when they were talking to him, uh, I believe that was ESPN that was talking to him while he was going through his warm-up routine, the guy is really, really comfortable in front of a microphone. You've seen the interviews for his entire career as a Cardinal. The guy knows what he's doing. He is uh, not shy about talking about the game and um, I personally, I love it when they have a former player up in the telecasts and in the broadcast booths. I like hearing the stories from their time on the field and in the clubhouses. And I think it's really cool that Adam is going to jump in right away. You know, it's not like he's going to wait three or four years and then come around and start doing it. He can talk about playing against guys that are still in the game. You know, you, you hear some of these guys that get into the broadcast, broadcast booth and you're like, you know, like Jimmy Edmonds, right? Well, you know, 15 years ago when he was playing, he talks about guys, but he didn't play against the guys that are out there right now. Adam Wainwright's going to be able to give you that insight into how he prepared uh, to take on guys who were playing in the game right now. So I'm looking forward to it. I think he's going to be just fine. 
It's not like Adam Wainwright fails at much in his life, you know? So we wish him the best of luck. I'm sure he'll do great. All right. Thanks for making Locked on Cardinals your first listen every day. If you haven't already, do me a solid, man. Give me a follow on Twitter, X at LO underscore Cardinals and a JD Sports Radio. Please like and subscribe on YouTube. Help our channel and love for the Cardinals grow. I don't know if you've noticed on the YouTube channel, I've been tinkering with a few things. I got I got a new camera, which I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing because now you can really see how disgusting I look. Um, but like today, we've got like a backdrop here of inside the clubhouse instead of in my office. So tell me whether or not you guys like these things or not. I'm just tinkering. I'm just trying to find what everybody likes the most. That way we can have a, a cool experience together here at Locked on Cardinals. You're the best fans in baseball for a reason. And uh, I will see you next time on Locked on Cardinals. Have a wonderful, wonderful day.